Hi everybody, happy Winterama. Today's project is a fun little whimsical mitten project. And it's so great because it's gonna show the size of your hand and you can add whatever details you want into them and each and every one will be unique. And I'm so excited about this project. So let me walk you through it. Remember to, if you need to pause, just to catch up with me, that's fine. Just stay one step at a time. If you have a paper towel nearby, that would be great. And a hair dryer really helps. Let's get painting. So you just wanna dip it in the blue and dab to make a fun circular texture all over. It's okay to let the white kind of show through like clouds a little bit here and there. The more paint that's on your brush, um, the darker it's going to be, and as you continue to do little circular motions, it'll get lighter because we're lifting the piece. You can also do little spins like this if you want. If you don't want to do full depth, like push down, spin, pull up, you can do little spins. I'm just trying to kind of get a nice playful snowball y texture in the background of the sky. Don't want to leave any globs. Make sure you spread them all out. So that the paint dries fast enough for us to do our next step. Don't forget to paint your edges. All right, so we should have our background looking something like this. Lots of nice texture for our sky background. Mine's dry now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use our hands to map out where we're gonna put our mittens on the painting. So depending on the size of your hands, you can kind of position where you wanna put your mittens and think it out a little bit. If you have bigger hands, you might wanna go sort of vertically so you have a bit more space. Um, if you have little hands, you can go um, horizontally or any way you want really, because there's lots of space for little hands. Um, and kind of just think it out. And remember to keep your fingers closed and then your thumbs out when you're doing your positioning. I think I'm gonna do mine on maybe vertical like this, because that makes a little bit more sense for my bigger hands. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, I'm gonna start with my red paint, but you can use any of your colors, whatever color you want as your primary mitten color. And I'm dipping my brush into that paint and I'm going to place my hand down with my thumb out and a little bit of my wrist down too. So I wanna go a little bit further than my wrist and I'm not gonna go right straight against my hand. Not like when we're tracing our hand perfectly to show our hand outline. This is gonna be a mitten, so it can be kind of a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, because we wanna know how big your set, your hand is at this age, but um, makes it look more like a mitten if it's a bit fluffier. So I'm just following all the way around my thumb. When it comes to the fingers, you don't wanna go around each one. So we'll start at, at the pointer finger and then just go up and around all of them in one big, one big swoop. And then back down to the hand. So you have something like that. And then you can see I started on my wrist. I'm gonna continue that same kind of straight line down to close up my mitten. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a happy face, kind of a crescent to connect the two lines that go down the wrist. So there's one mitten and I need to put one more on there and it's gotta be the other hand. Okay, so I've got my 
right hand positioned on my canvas where I want it to go. It's going to be a little bit trickier because this is my um, my hand that I usually paint with is the one that I'm tracing. So I'm using my left hand and so it's going to be a little bit trickier, but I'm just going to try my best. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a mitten and it's a bit fluffy. And if you have help, if you can get a parent or a brother or a sister to help you trace around it or a friend, that's always good too. I'm going to come right in at the bottom of my palm and then remember to go straight along my wrist. And I didn't do my around my thumb yet. I'm going to go back and do that part. Nope. It's okay if your mittens are touching a little bit. That's fine. Even overlapping could be cute. And I always kind of wait on the second side of the wrist just so I can make those two lines parallel, which means they are running sort of this same direction. And then again, I'm going to connect them with a bit of a crescent shape. And here you can kind of fix up your mittens too. Like see this little lump right here? I'm not a, I don't love that it has that lump, so that's not a big deal. I'm just going to go back over my line and kind of straighten it out. So it's not as lumpy. There. I like a little lumps. I like these lumps over here. I'm kind of just going back over. Like so. Now what we're going to do next is I'm still using the red paint because I want that to be my main color of my mitten. So I'm going to take my red paint and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to hold it flat and run it along the same direction as we did for the wrists. So this is gonna be the cuff of our mitten. And as, as you progress, you'll see that little lines are kind of coming out of it. And it's making a really nice texture, like it's a knitted mitten. Can you see the texture coming in? Try and keep it nice and flat. There we go. There's one side and then the other. And the other one's going to go still with that direction of our wrist and holding my brush nice and flat so it's making a nice wide brush stroke. I'm going to go all the way along from the bottom sort of of my palm, right where my wrist would have gone to that crescent shape we made at the end. Like so. I'm just doing nice straight strokes, trying to keep them aligned. You don't have to go fast. You can overlap a little bit. If you don't want to be careful of your background coming through, that's fine. We can overlap just a bit. There, so now I have my two mittens outlined and my cuffs for my mittens, which are looking pretty cute. And I'm going to do a string and your string's really fun. So you're just gonna connect one side of your cuff to the other side of your cuff, but you could do whatever shape you want. So I think I'm gonna start it at the corners, near the same corner, at the inside corner where my thumbs are, but like at the cuff. So here, and then my string's gonna go and I think I'm gonna even have it come up into, you could do a loop-de-loo, you could do squiggle. Boop. So that's my string. And it's kind of a fun little twisty, tw turny string. You can go over it if you need to sort of thicken it a little bit or darken it. It's fun to do your string if you can in one stroke. I know I'm going back over it now, but just kind of to touch it up. But if you can do it in one stroke, it'll give you a nice straight edge on your string. The slower you do it, the more sort of choppy it's going to look. 
which is kind of what's happening to me now because I'm not touching it back up. There we go. I think I'm just going to thicken down here a tiny bit. There. Super cute. Okay, I'm going to let this dry for a minute and put my red aside just for a minute because I'm going to come back to it soon. Um, and wash my brush because I want to go into another color next. If you want to speed up the process, you can grab your hair dryer and dry your painting um, because you want your colors to not be wet and touching in between. It just will make some mucky colors that you may not like. Um, so I'm just going to do that quickly. I'm going to dry my painting up and we'll add in um, the white next. I'm going to add in a lot of white to cover some of the background so that our yellow really pops. So now I have the white and I'm just filling in the mittens in white. And what this is going to do is it's going to make all the colors pop. So we be really, really careful when you're coming close to your edges. Since it's dry, it's okay that it goes, if you go over it a little tiny bit, that's fine. Um, if it's not dry, careful, careful, careful. You should try to make sure it's dry or else you'll end up with pink. Unless you want pink in your mittens, that's fine too. And all I'm doing is filling the whole thing in white. That way when we put the yellows on there and the orange, it'll really, really pop. And then it'll make the, the um, red more vibrant too. But I like how we did the bottom part without the white because it gives it a bit of a shadow underneath to have a bit darker red down there. All these little tricks. When I'm coming close to the edges, I'm always watching the outside of my brush. I don't care what's happening on the inside of the mitten because I can always blend that out, but I do care what's happening right close to my edges. Trying to stay in my lines I made myself. And I'm also trying not to leave big clumps of paint. See over here how there's some clumps? like some lines kind of from when you place the paint, paint down. See here, you can see like a big glob. What we want to do is make sure we spread that out all over the place so that it dries quicker for one thing and it dries evenly because our next coat's on top. We don't want to really see that through it too much. A little bit's okay because then it just has a little bit of like mitten -y texture. But you don't want too, too much. And if there's big globs like that, they take forever to dry. Just going over my line a little bit to correct it. You can see that it's kind of coming through underneath. That's okay. I think next color will cover that up for me. Might have even been a little bit wet. It's kind of blending some pink. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that to both mittens. And then we can get our hair dryer out afterwards and uh, dry it all up. So we should have two white mittens. And if you stuck with the red like I did, there'll be white mittens with red outlines. And if you chose a different color, then they will be white mittens with your other color outlines. Either way will work. And these ones are gonna make the inside colors just pop. So we'll just keep getting our mitten filled in until we have two big white mittens. some white mittens. <laughs> um, we may need to blow dry it still, but we're going to let it dry a little bit on its own. And while it's drying, we are going to do some snowflakes in the background because we might as well blow dry it all at once. So um, there's a couple of ways that we're going to do these little snowflakes. First, we can use the back of our brush and we call those dip and dabs. We'll dip it into the paint and we'll dab. 
and those can be all over our blue background because it's winter and my weekend and it's snowing in our painting so we need to have our warm mittens ready to go and play in the snow so i'm just doing dip maybe two dabs and then dip again so it's something like that some other great snowflake um tools is to use the remember our daughter we used at the beginning we're going to use that but we can use two different sizes of circles again so we have our little tiny ones you can do a bigger the odd bigger snowflake if you want these ones i'm just going to dip my sponge into the white and then take some off and then maybe i'll do one up here i'm gonna push down spin pull up maybe a couple coming off the sides of the page I don't want to go too crazy with the big ones because they take up a lot of space, but they are really pretty. Something like that. And then the, the back side of that brush can do a medium sized dot for the snowflakes. So we're just dipping and dabbing. I'm going to slid a little bit. That's okay. Every snowflake is Every snowflake is different. No snowflake is perfect. They're all unique. And just keep covering up your background. It can be as snowy or as um, blue skied as you like. If you don't want a lot of snowflakes, you don't need a lot. If you don't want any, you don't have to have any. This is your artwork. Um, if you want it to be a snowstorm, that's fine too. Add a couple of those. I didn't dip it um, this time. I'm adding a couple more big ones. I didn't dip it though, so it's kind of like showing almost like it's in the background a little bit more because some of that background blue is coming through and it's not as intense with the white. And I kind of like it like that. But you'll experiment and sort of see what size you like. If you have little hands, you'll have more room to do bigger snowflakes. Might do a few more teeny tiny ones now that I've got some big ones in there. I think I'm gonna make it really snowy. <laughs> you could even have a snowflake on your mitten if you want. Pretty fun to do the snowflakes. Can easily get carried away, but that's okay. Do as many as you like. Goes really nice with our swirly sort of textured background that we did at the beginning. Okay, I think that's cute. I feel like I kind of need a bigger one in here. I might do one. Let's see if I can do this. This might be a bit tricky. I'm gonna just do like a half one around the thumb. So I'm just gently pushing, oops, pushing and pulling up just like I normally would. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna wipe a bit away, but I'll come back with my red paint and make it look like it's behind the mitten. Or actually it's kind of cute on top of it even. Hmm, we'll see, maybe we'll leave it on top. For now, I'm going to wipe it away. I can always add more on top after. All right, so you should have something like this. And we can get our hair dryer back out and just do a quick dry up of everything. Um, if you have any clumps, this works good to kind of get your clumps out too. Just saw a couple little clumps. Um, and dry it all up, and we'll do the next step. Okay, so this next part is really fun. This is where you get to sort of just make it your own. What we're going to do is we're going to do different stripes of different colors, and then each stripe will be a, another texture on top of it. So maybe you'll have a yellow stripe with 
orange polka dots. Or maybe you'll have a red stripe with blue stitching. Or maybe you'll have a blue stripe with some white snowflakes. So that's where we're gonna have some fun with it. And everybody's are gonna turn out different and you can use whatever colors you want and in whatever patterns you want. You could do lots of little skinny stripes. You could even just make your mittens striped if you want. Or you could do um, like the thumb one color and then the top of the mitt one color and then do a bunch of stripes. There's so many ways to decorate these mittens and I really would love to see them. So make sure you post them to the Make A Mess um, either Instagram or Facebook. Send them to me when you're done because I want to see how these all turn out. I'm so excited for this. I'm excited to see how mine turn out. Okay, so I have some colors set out there and I'm just gonna start doing a stripe. I'm gonna hold my brush flat like I did for the cuff and I'm gonna do a stripe right across the bottom. You can do this in any color. But whatever you do to one mitten, you want to do to the other mitten. So I'm going to do a yellow stripe right across the bottom of this guy too. And then I think my next, what I'm going to do is, so that I don't have to wash my brush too many times, I'm just going to plan where I want to put my yellow. I think I'm going to do my um, tip of my thumb or maybe my whole thumb in yellow like this. So I'm going to do like a little curve and then fill my thumb in yellow. That could change. I might add some stripes on top of it after. For now, I'm going to do it all yellow. Or maybe I'll leave it yellow. It's the beauty of art. You can kind of edit it as you go. But whatever I do to one the or one mitten or thumb, <laughs> we're gonna do to the other. So I'm just gonna kind of do a curve from the right where the V of my thumb is, and it's gonna kind of come down like that and fill it in. And this is where I had that, that snowflake. So I'm going to see what I like. I'm going to see if I like it going behind. So if I put the yellow on top of it, and I just make the mitten there, I can do the red outline after if I need to. Um, then that kind of makes it look like the, the snowflake is, on, is behind the mitten. But if I were to keep that yellow snowflake sort of in this area, keep or sorry keep the white snowflake instead of the yellow then it's gonna look like the snowflake is on top of the mitten and if you decide like say you did this like I have and then you decide actually I kind of wanted that snowflake to be on his thumb that's not a problem at all you just gotta let it dry and then you can do your snowflake on top afterwards the key with acrylics is just to always let it dry so I'm going to dip into my orange paint next. I just moved it up here. I'm taking a little bit of my paint off my brush. You could do it on a paper towel too. And I'm going to do a bigger stripe this time. So that other one was about one brush stroke wide. And I'm just going really close to it. And you can even leave a teeny bit of white with a line in between if you want. Or you could leave a white stripe, which I might do next. Um, and this one's going to be about two brush strokes wide. Something like that. And then I'm going to go do that over here. Same idea. here start to my paintbrush. Just gotta get that off there. <laughs> it's fun when you have a table you can paint on. Here we go. I went over my yellow 
yellow just a bit. Don't worry too much if you do that or if it blends in. That's okay. Yellow and orange mix really easily together. And then I think I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a space. So in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to leave a white line. And then I'm going to do a blue. And then I'm going to do another white. So I think my next orange is going to be like up here. Oops, sorry, up here. And it's going to be... Maybe that. And then I'm just going to do a bunch of stripes, I think, after that. So if you want to kind of measure on the same size for your other mitt, you can line up your paintbrush and then line it up at your other mitt and give yourself an idea where to put it. Do a little mark. Very subtle little mark, you couldn't really see it. And then again, we're just gonna do a stripe right across. It's okay if it's not a perfectly straight line. That one's a little bit curved, but it gives your mid a bit of dimension too. Look how cute they're looking. Adorable. Love, love, love. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some red in. It needs some red now. Okay, so I'm gonna add in some red now. If you want some narrower stripes, you can also do the edge of your brush like this. So maybe you wanna do like a little skinny stripe. So I'm just holding the edge of my brush straight up and down to do those little stripes. And see how it made that little tiny stripe? That's how we're also gonna outline everything um, at the end with our red. And if you've got an angled brush, so you could have two brushes. You could have an angled flat brush or a flat brush without the angle. Either one will work. You just want to make sure that it's right on the edge of it and then pulling straight with the edge. If you have the angle, just make sure that the angle, um, you're pulling away from the tip to make that nice straight edge, okay? So I did a line there, so I better do that over here too. And I really think that my tip of my mittens are gonna be in the red too. So I'm gonna do like a little crescent shape of the tip of my mittens and do that in the red. And they're looking really cute. And if you're doing those little narrow lines and you find that you can't get them as skinny as you would like. It might just be that your paintbrush has a little bit too much paint on it. So you can take a paper towel, which I don't have near me, but if you have a paper towel, you can squeeze your paintbrush and then just pull your paintbrush out. And I did it with my fingers. And it'll make all your bristles really tight and stick back together and the shape of your brush really nice again. So that can really help you get those details that you're looking for. So sometimes it just needs a little sharpening of the brush to make that happen. And so I did the tip of that mitten, so I'm gonna do the tip of this mitten. I did a little bit of a curve on, on the tip. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Kind of started rounding it, so my line was a little bit curved, but it can be straight too, that's fine. And then I'm just filling it all in. I think I'm going to do um, some little red stripes too on my thumbs. So I'm gonna do the tip of my thumb, to red to match the, the tip of the mitten. And then I'm gonna do some teeny little stripes all the way down. Be kind of cute. And I'm curving those ones just a little bit to make it, um, give, give the feeling of your thumb being a little bit more rounded. So it looks something like this. It's kind of cute, huh? Or you could put polka dots in your thumbs if you wanted. That would be cute too. At the end of your brush. I'm just kind of touching them up a little bit.
And I am going to just leave that snowflake in behind my mitten, I've decided. And I'm just going to do my tip of the other thumb. And my stripes all the way down. Try to do them about the same if you're doing stripes. About the same um, width apart and size. And I'm doing skinnier ones just to give it a little bit extra detail. You could do thick ones. You would only need a few that way. And to do the thick ones, you would lay your paintbrush flat. And I'm pretty sure I have more stripes on one side than the other, but that's okay. It's art. Look how cute they're looking. <laughs> I'm going to add in another red stripe, I think, at the edge of each of my orange stripes. I just think it looks cute to kind of frame in the thicker stripes with the thinner stripes. And so that'll be sweet like that. So I'm going to do that here too. Well, you have the red on your brush and we're doing little stripes you can always uh do your outlining a little bit more solid or whatever original color you had you can go over that again it's kind of crisping up your lines helps to if you um had any little boo-boos it helps to kind of fix it up a little bit too crispen them up make it look a little bit more intentional all right, this is what I got so far. <laughs> what do you think? I think I'm gonna add in some blue soon, um, but I need to wash my brush and I wanna put some more yellow up in here too. So I'm gonna wash my brush because it's easy to switch from yellow to orange and you can wipe off your brush and switch from orange to red pretty easily. But if you wanna go backwards and switch from the red to the yellow or to the white, you definitely wanna wash your brush in between. I think I'm going to go back into the yellow just to add a couple of stripes at the top because I feel like it needs a couple more stripes. So I'm going to do a yellow stripe just along the top, like so. And I'm going to leave enough room that I'm going to put another, um, I'll leave a white stripe and a blue stripe. So I'm going to do that over here too. But I felt like it needed to bring a little bit more yellow up to the top of the mitten because it had yellow down at the bottom and not that as much up at the top. So I kind of just wanted that to make sense and match a little bit. Now I'm gonna do blue next. And so we have to go wash our brush again really quick. Or I'm gonna just wipe it off on my pants. But you if you have a paper towel nearby, you can do that. Um, but you wanna get all that yellow paint off before you dip into your blue. Now I'm dipping into the blue and I'm going to do a blue stripe next to my yellow really carefully, but I don't want it to, um, to mix unless you want it to mix it. Cause then you could have green. You've got all the primary colors in this project. You've got red and yellow and blue. So really you could make any colors you want it. Anyhow, you can experiment mixing colors if you want. Just get a little like plate on the side and mix different colors and see if you like any of those other colors. If you want to add some different colors in, I'm going to stick with the colors in the kit. And now I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a white stripe between, here I'll show you, see I'm leaving a white stripe after that red one so it's kind of a pattern it goes like this big orange one in the middle and then a little skinny red on each side then a white on each side then a blue on each side but the difference with this one is going to be i'm going to do this blue one really thick because i'm going to try and do a couple little snowflakes in there i think so this one i'm going to do let's say like maybe three or four Thick. Actually, I think how I'm going to determine it is I'm going to do the same size white stripe on the other side down here. See, so I've just let I left this stripe here and this stripe here, and then everything else in between. I'm just going to fill that part in. So a piece of my mitten is blue, like the background. Hmm. 
if you find that it's kind of I find it's almost like blending in with the background just a little bit too much so I think actually what I've decided to do this is kind of on the spot is I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit and just add in a little bit of light so that it pops it a bit so it's like a light blue instead If your background's really a little bit lighter than mine, then you might want the darker blue. This felt like it was kind of a little bit too close to my background near it. But that'll be okay, because I'm gonna add some more colors on top of it too. So I might just mix a little bit of that on my brush. So I've got a double dipped up some white and some blue for the next one. And I'm gonna leave that white stripe that I was talking about on both sides. And then, double dipping again and then filling it. And I'm just making up my patterns as I go. So <laughs> the fun of art is we can decide what we how we like it as we're going. If we don't like it, like I just did, I was feeling like it was too dark, we can change it. And even as I'm looking at it more, it's still making me feel like I need more red because that was really the main color of my mitten. So maybe I'll add some more red in too. I think I'll do a lot of red stitching, but that's coming up. I'm just gonna finish doing this blue first here. Cause I can picture a snowflake, a nice big snowflake in the middle of each mitten in my mind. So I'm gonna try and do that. So this is where I'm at so far. Um, so it's basically all these backgrounds, all each stripe consider it a background again because we're gonna add another layer. So the next layer is gonna be um, either polka dots or X's, little crisscrosses, or just little lines the other way. And that will start giving it lots and lots and lots of fun texture. So I'm just gonna take a peek and decide which one to start with. We might as well start, um, if we start painting on the ones we did first, they're probably dry by now. And I'm going to add a little bit of red in because I feel like it needs more red. So on my, my actually I'm gonna do a, a line in between this orange and yellow as well, I decided. <laughs> and then on my orange, that's a bit thicker. I'm gonna do some little, lines like this so these are little diagonal lines and whatever you do to one you're gonna do to the other right so I'm doing diagonal lines this way and then I'm gonna go do that same thing on my other mitten diagonal lines that way but that's not all no I'm gonna actually add diagonal lines the other way too so these are gonna look like little X's or little stitches. So I'm just going from one corner to the other. Like that. Look how cute, so it's just like little X's all the way across. And I added in that other um, red line too. So I'm gonna add that here in between the orange and the yellow. And then I'm gonna do my little X's. diagonal lines one way giving a good little bit of space in between because we have to remember we're gonna cross it too okay and then diagonal lines to crisscross them the other way and I'm just attaching one end to the other super cute okay in the yellow part I'm gonna do dots and I think I'm gonna do orange dots so I'm gonna use the back of my brush and I'm going to dip just like we do with the snowflakes and then I'm gonna do a little line of dots 
I need to dip in between. <laughs> Get, bring it nice and close so you can see it here. So cute. And we'll do that to the other one too. And that's all you're going to do is each line, you're going to decorate it with another pattern. And you'll see the more you put into it, the more little details, the more vibrant and, and colorful into life your mittens will become. Okay, so I'm going to again add a, a red stripe um, around my blue because I think I really like seeing more red in here because my red was my dominant color. So I'm adding red around that blue, that bigger blue part that I said I was gonna put a snowflake in. I'm gonna add a little bit in there. Mine was a bit wet. It kinda has some purple coming through, but that's okay. Like that. And then we'll do it on the other side. See how it kind of brings it together a little bit. And do it on both sides. looking really cute and I'm just gonna do it with these on my thumb too making that part a little thicker and this guy too there's like the red sort of really coming out everywhere pops it since we outlined it in red it just kind of keeps that same color going throughout especially if you're thinking of it like stitching um, all right, what's up next? I think I'm going to do... Hmm, maybe I'll just do some more little dots in these ones, but maybe I'll do those ones in a different color. So like over here, I have orange dots on yellow. So maybe I will do some blue dots on the yellow one at the top. That might be cute. And so I've got the end of my brush. And I'm gonna do blue dots on the yellow stripe at the top. And if you don't wanna decorate every single stripe, you don't have to, you can leave them striped just as a solid too. That looks nice too. Um, and then whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing these snowflakes because I think this is a really cute technique and easy for you to do if you wanna do this too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use just the edge of my brush and I sharpened it before, which meant I like took the paint off and I made sure the bristles were all stuck together. I'm holding it just on the edge and I'm doing an X in the middle, really, really carefully. The harder you push, the thicker your line's gonna be. So try not to push too, too hard, just a nice thin line. And then I'm just gonna do, in between each X, I'm gonna push down and do like a little line like that. And then at the top of each line, I'm just gonna do sort of like a little pitchfork, like a little V that has the top of it sticking out a little bit, the top of the line sticking out. So it makes like a little, kind of like a little fork. Look how cute so easy and you can even add an extra detail by dipping the back of your brush in and you could add like a little polka dot at the end of each of your little lines see so sweet and so easy to do those cute little snowflakes i'm gonna do one on the other side too so all i'm gonna do is an x And then remember, I'm just kind of pressing straight down and using it almost like a stamp. The edge of my brush is just like a stamp. And then I'm gonna do the same kind of pitchfork idea, just like a stamp. And that stamping technique can work really good for stripes too inside your mitten. Stripes for little lines. And then back of the brush. And tap, 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 tap. 
so cute. I don't know if you if you wanted you could even do another one I guess over on the sides I think I'm just gonna leave the one big one on each of mine um, or you could just do some little like X's maybe I don't know I'm just I don't know if I want to do it or not I kind of like the simplicity like that I know I'm gonna fix up that line right there so I can see a spot <laughs> I'm gonna I just clean my brush off and I'm just gonna add into the red fix my line up over here like so and I really liked how these crisscrosses turned out. So I think I'm just gonna do the same thing on my other orange line with the red. So I'm just gonna do that, copy that same pattern up here. But you could do different patterns and different colors in every single one if you want. It's funny because as I'm painting this, hands are cold. <laughs> I need to wear my mittens. Just little X's. If it's easier to do it like one X at a time, you can do that too. Might be easier. And don't worry if they're not perfect because mittens, like knitted mittens aren't perfect. You know, artwork's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. That's okay. There we go. I actually really love the little mittens. So cute. I think I might do one more thing. I think I'm gonna add something into this white stripe on each one. I'm just trying to think like what to do. If your stripes are big enough, you could use the, the back side of your polka dotter again. Might be big enough. Mm, I feel like not quite big enough. Maybe I'll do the stamping idea like we were saying. So maybe I'll just have it with a nice sharp edge of my brush. I'll just stamp. I'm gonna stamp the opposite direction stripes. That kind of looks like stitching going a different direction. And before I was debating whether I wanted to add that white or the stripe in after that one, it's kind of making me want to do it now that I've got red in there. Let's do the other side and then I'll make up my mind about that. I don't want to do one between the yellow and blue. So that's why I'm debating whether I want to do it or not with the other one. You know what? I'm going to leave it like that. I think it's adorable. I hope you do too, and I hope you had fun doing it. Um, another little thing you could do if you wanted to add a little bit more stripes on your bottom parts, you can do that. You could mix a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of orange in with your red. If you want that sort of um, cuff texture to show up a bit more, and then just kind of pull a little bit down along each of those little cuffs, those little rib, ribs in the cuffs, and that'll make it pop a little bit. There, it's adorable. I had so much fun painting with you today. I hope you had fun too. The mitten project turned out super cute. I love that you can hang it really in any direction. I love how whimsical it is and how it's got cute little polka dots and snowflakes and all the little details we added to the mittens. And I would really, really like to see yours. So I hope you're going to share them with me. It's Make a Mess Art Studio on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube. Um, yeah, show me what you made. I'd love to see it. Make sure you tag me. Um, and my hands are getting kind of cold. It's cold outside. <laughs> I'm going to go find some mittens.